Nearly one week after a deadly shooting here at Douglas Park, one local organization says people should not be afraid of this park. The Fayette County School Board Chair says he was the obvious choice. Tonight, the school district has a new superintendent. And the Lexington Pride Festival was even more festive this year, celebrating equality a day after a landmark ruling from the Supreme Court. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. It's been a fixture in Lexington's Douglas Park for decades, but soon the Dirt Bowl Basketball League may have a new home. The discussion about moving the league comes on the heels of a deadly shooting during a game at the park. Kwame El Amin died Thursday night at UK Hospital. Someone shot him and four other people last Sunday. As WKYT's Monique Blair reports, there's mixed reaction on whether the league should leave the park. It's our top story at 11. Kwame was a nice guy. He was always a fixture here in Douglas Park. He had a food truck. He fed you whether you had money or not. 42-year-old Kwame El Amin was one of five people shot in Douglas Park last Sunday. He died Thursday night. This young man was shot while watching a basketball game on Father's Day. That bothers me. And since last Sunday, this park has been quiet. Usually on a Saturday afternoon, this time of day would be filled with kids playing. As you can see, there's no children here playing. I'm told it's up in the air right now whether or not basketball leagues will even resume playing here at Douglas Park after last week's deadly shooting. A spokesperson for the mayor's office tells us referees, players, and community members will meet this week to discuss whether or not the basketball game should continue to be played at the park. For the time being, they have been moved to the Dunbar Community Center. But Tim Mitchell with the Bikers Against Violence organization says it's not the park that should take the heat for this crime. Parks do nothing. People in parks do many things. No one has been arrested in relation to the shootings last week. Elamine's friends say he was the type of guy who would teach young kids how to grow up to be good people. One way his friend Aaron Mayberry says he's going to strive to keep Elamine's legacy alive. I just feel like it's time to reverse the roles and, and, and do what he used to do. To, to younger guys like me as I was growing up. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. The Bikers Against Violence say they will be riding at noon tomorrow at New Circle Road and Georgetown Road, trying to collect money for Elamine's family. After months of searching, the Fayette County School District has a new leader tonight. In a unanimous vote this afternoon, the school board named Emmanuel Manny Kalk the new superintendent. The 43-year-old was chosen after a week of meetings, forums, and interviews with students, parents, employees, and community members. Kalk has been the superintendent of Portland, Maine's public schools since, two, since 2012. Before that, he was the assistant superintendent in Philadelphia, serving 167,000 students. School board chair John Price says Kalk received positive feedback from both the community and the school board and is the best fit for the job. He has three degrees, he's an attorney, he's, he will finish his Ph.D. doctorate in education in December, and at points in his lifetime in the past he was homeless, he grew up in a housing project, so I think he, his life is a reflection of the value of education. Kalk's starting salary is $240,000. No official start date has been set, but we're told Kalk will be in Lexington before students go back to school August 12th. Cooler weather moved into the bluegrass today, and the break from the summer heat should continue tomorrow. WKYT's Mike Linden is in the First Alert Weather Center with an early look at the forecast. Well, Kristen, a break from the summer blues. It's, it has certainly been an interesting season since it all got started on the 21st. Now, less than a week after the official start, we're going to jump ahead basically until the early fall. That's what it feels like outside right now. On live first alert defender, not really picking up very much on the live radar. What you're seeing over near Jefferson County, that's just some ground clutter. Nothing that is falling from the sky this evening. In fact, most of that has pushed off to the east as this cold front that has led in the cool, dry air is forcing all of that moisture toward the eastern seaboard. But behind this front is again all of that cool, dry air, which is 
Texas. Certainly had enough time all day today to settle in at the surface. We're seeing temperatures slowly dropping back right now in the low 60s, but we should see temperatures fall back even more than they already have than over the past 24 hours of difference. And of course, the focus of the forecast will be the effects of this cooler, drier air and what that means for Sunday afternoon. Kristen? Mike, thousands of people attended the Lexington Pride Festival today in downtown Lexington, and this year there was even more reason to celebrate. The event came just one day after the Supreme Court's historic decision to legalize same sex marriage in all 50 states. The Pride Festival is normally a place where people make a plea for equality, but today attendees were celebrating equality. Not even about if you're gay, straight, it doesn't matter. It's about people getting together and being a part of something that's truly amazing. An estimated 20,000 people attended the day long event. The manhunt for an escaped killer intensified today after law enforcement officers shot and killed his partner Friday. Police armed with rifles are patrolling checkpoints in the town of Malone. It's about 30 miles from the Clinton Correctional Facility where Richard Matt and David Sweat escaped three weeks ago. Investigators believe Sweat is still hiding somewhere in those woods. Search teams cornered Richard Matt near a cabin Friday following a report that someone shot a man's camper. Police say the escapee was armed and refused to surrender. You never want to see anyone uh, lose their life. Uh, but uh, I would remind people that Mr. Matt was uh, an escaped murderer. Police believe they are closing in on Sweat. They say he is now alone, desperate, and could make a mistake leading to his capture. Sweat was convicted of murdering a sheriff's deputy. Police in South Carolina arrested two people today after one of them climbed the 30 foot flagpole outside the state house and removed the Confederate flag. Controversy about the flag ignited last week following the massacre of nine people at a Charleston church. Police arrested a man and woman from Charlotte. Both are charged with defacing a monument. The couple has bonded out of jail. South Carolina's governor has called for the flag to be removed from the state house, but the removal requires a vote by the legislature. New at 11, the city has now cleaned off graffiti on the statue of a well known Confederate general outside of the old Fayette County Courthouse. Overnight on Friday, someone spray painted the phrase Black Lives Matter across the front of the John Hunt Morgan statue on Main Street. The person responsible will face a third degree criminal mischief charge. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray said he doesn't condone vandalism, but does believe it's time for the city to reconsider its Confederate memorials. We have new information tonight into the investigation of a crash in Tennessee. Police say a Kentucky truck driver was involved in a crash on I-75 in Chattanooga. 39-year-old Benjamin Brewer from London wasn't able to stop his semi in a construction zone, and officers say he slammed into eight cars. Six people died, two of them children. A report tonight in the Chattanooga Times Free Press says police are asking drivers who stopped to help victims to contact them with information to help with their investigation. Friends and family will begin saying goodbye tomorrow to a Kentucky State Police trooper killed in the line of duty. Trooper Eric Chrisman died Tuesday night after his cruiser hit a tractor trailer near the Marshall Livingston County line. The 23 year old grew up in Anderson County. He graduated from the State Police Academy six months ago. Christmas visitation is at 3 tomorrow afternoon and again at 9 Monday morning at Nineveh Christian Church in Lawrenceburg. The funeral will be at 11 Monday morning at the church. For a good 30 minutes or less, Domino's Pizza is now offering Dine In. The pizza giant opens its first pizza theater in Lexington today, and the new restaurant features Dine In seating. It's Domino's latest concept with Dine In and more of an open concept so customers can watch their pizza being made from start to finish so they can see the fresh dough, how the dough is made, see the fresh toppings going on. The restaurant also features free Wi Fi. The only dine in location right now is in the Park Hills Center on Pimlico Parkway.